So I tend to do a lot of projects with old electronics. And one of the things about old electronics is capacitors. These are notorious for failing and going bad and exploding and leaking electrolytics between Xboxes and Game Gears and oh, so much stuff. So I have been meaning to get serious about being able to diagnose capacitor problems for a while. So I finally decided it was time and bought an ESR meter. Not only that, I bought it with all of the kit and caboodle to go with it. And as soon as I got it out, I got the battery out of the box with it, and I grabbed it and I put it in just like that, and that was wrong. That's backwards. And I fried it. So at certain angles of light, it's not easy to see that there actually is a polarity indicator in there. And I had missed it. And the tabs don't really give you a good indicator of it. So I'd ended up installing it backwards. Now, the way they've implemented reverse polarity protection on this LCR meter doesn't allow you to go, oops, and put the battery back in the correct way. The way they do this is to have a diode inside that shorts when the battery is connected backwards. I was actually able to remove that diode and can install the battery the correct way. And if I carefully look at how the light goes, because I am not protected now, minus to minus, I can see it does indeed work. There we go. And that's okay. Not great. I'm now running unprotected. If I make that same mistake and put the battery in backwards again, goodbye LCR meter. I've decided I'm going to replace the diode. So I ordered some replacements off Amazon. I'm not 100% sure that these are the correct type, but we'll find out. I'm going to test them outside of the device before I put them into it. Now, this is the power input on the LCR meter. As you can see here, we have positive going from the battery and it connects to this side of the diode. And we have negative here and it connects to the other side of the diode. If we look here, we can see that the diode goes in backwards because negative is connected to the anode and positive is connected to the cathode. So when it's normally powered, this does nothing. But when it's powered incorrectly, this becomes positive and allows charge to flow through the diode. However, being a nine volt battery, it allows so much power through that it shorts the diode. Now, these, are the replacement diodes I've chosen to go with. Go ahead and cut one off. And we can try it out. Now, the diode doesn't have to fail for this to work, but I'm just going to go ahead and mimic the circuit as it is. So I have a diode here, and if I connect it, I can see on my multimeter that I'm getting a 0.6 volt drop on it. And that's to be expected. Now what I'm going to test here is putting the diode directly across a 9 volt battery. It should short internally and then let the maximum amount of current through. That's how the original circuit worked. Now I have some leads connected to a 9 volt battery. I'm going to go ahead and short on this diode. Yeah, it looks a little darker in there to me. Okay, let's see if anything has changed. I'm getting a 0 .57, 0 .58 drop here now. Maybe it needs longer or better contact. Ah, there we go. Letting some smoke out. And now... Oh, I'm getting... No, it's still going! I am impressed. Actually, is it melting my mat here? 
Oh, that was a smoke. It melted my mat. Um, I'm going to reset this. Okay, yeah, so hot things get hot. Now let's check the diode one more time. I'm still at 0.6 volt drop. So, let's, whoops, continue and blow this sucker. Changing colors. Ooh, pretty glow. Got a little bit of smoke. Now I think that will do it. Double check. There we go. That's what we were looking for. So now we can be certain that one of these put in place of the diode on the LCR meter will work in exactly the same way. Okay, now we're knowledgeable and ready to replace that diode. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit first. Wait, get it. Close enough. Now we'll put down some fresh stuff on one side. Go and tack the diode down. There we are. Get the other side secured. And there we have it. A successful repair of the LCR meter. And there we go. After all that, now I have a working LCR meter. Sweet. Now that's taken care of. I think I need to play with it a little bit. So let's grab this thing, plug her in, there we go, and now we can clip in some capacitors. Let's go ahead and take, yeah, this one. So this is an 1800 microfarad, Back the positive and the negative. Ooh, we're not a lot of room there. There we go. And we can see we're reading 1500. Okay. Let's grab a smaller value. A, uh, what is this one? This is a 470 microfarad. Wow, these are tiny. Uh, let's see, I have something else here, probably more appropriate. Some tweezers. Now let's see about using these. Take my capacitor here, and if we're positive, I'm going to do that. Boom. not great but, you know all right so this gets the same reading on this should be 1500 all right I'm feeling happy with that that seems good oh right, it's big ones here uh, this is uh, 1200 all right Man, that 470 sucks. Uh, go for a weird one here, one of these yellow ones. What's this? 820 microfarads. Okay. All right. Now I have a special trick for this to test. Now, here is a fun challenge for this. This is a 680 picofarad capacitor. This thing should be able to handle this no problem. Why I'm so interested 
is my Fluke 287 here should be able to measure a capacitor, no problem. But if I take one of these and I try and measure it on here, I always get a value that's off by a factor of 10. And it should be able to go down to that range. So, let's find out how the LCR meter fares. Oh, it doesn't seem to be doing too great here. Up. Oh. There we go. 600 picofarads. Perfect. Yeah, that thing just paid for itself right there because that was really bugging me. I can also just do this by doing that. Bam. That is nice. So I can also just double this here. Boom. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, that's too much fun. Well, I'd say this was a success. Um, glad to have that after the last video. But yeah, uh, I hope I helped someone else out who may have purchased one of these and uh, may have done the same thing because it's pretty easy to do. That battery definitely fits in backwards. It'd be really nice if they could have molded the plastic so that's not possible, but whatever. Um, water under the bridge now. I'll put a link in the description to the Amazon item that was the diodes, so anyone else who wants to get them can. They were just a signal switching diode, so nothing really that fancy. But uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll see you next time.